Welcome to Celeste, where the music is peaceful and the platforming is painful. Well, it can be. If you brave the mountain as you get deeper, or higher, you'll find that the game has a lot of heart and attention to detail. In this video we'll be looking at a number of easter eggs and fun facts in Celeste, so continue watching if you don't mind some spoilers. Let's start off with one of the most well-known secrets, the hidden developer room tucked away in Chapter 6. So halfway through the chapter, right by the checkpoint titled Reflections, you'll find this room with a broken elevator and a quick interaction with Granny. Rather than heading to the right as intended, you want to dash up and wall climb through the hole in the ceiling. From here we need to do a couple quick tricks. The first is a wall bounce, which is where you dash upwards next to a wall and jump during the dash, which gives us enough height to grab the next block. Then we can use a hyper dash. For reference, a hyper dash is where you dash down diagonally and then jump, giving you a lot of horizontal momentum with minimal height, while preserving your dash which we need to get up to safety. From there we head into the dev room proper. Said room is home to six characters idling. From left to right we have Ogmo from Jumper, Nevoa from Skytorn, Captain Yuri from Out There Somewhere, then the uh, Ibats, Blue Archer, and Pink Archer all from Towerfall. From there, here's a fun fact. Madeline actually has idle animations, which I assume most players miss due to either always being in motion or at the bottom of a pit. In every level except Summit, she can either look around, scratch her chin, or sneeze. <laughs> Here you go. While in the Summit, she has three entirely different animations that can play. She can look off into the distance, jump around impatiently, and crack her knuckles. I, I, I don't like that noise. Speaking of noise, another fun detail is in the game's files, which can be found if you extract all of the sound files in the sfx.bank file. The file in question that we're talking about is a bit of audio called Wow So Secret, which if played sounds like this. To confirm, yeah, it's a 16 second long rickroll that was left in. Next, a bit of context. Theo is one of the game's main characters, and he appears at various points in the story. Early on, he mentions his love of photography, and near the end of chapter 2, he takes his first selfie with Madeline, which we learn he posts on something called Instapix. What's cool is that there is actually an official Instagram for Theo under the name Theo Understars which is filled with in-universe pictures that were uploaded right around the release of the game in January of 2018. Through his Instagram, we get to see the adventure from his perspective. He shows off his cat spoons, his favorite shoes, and an old pic of him without a beard before packing up and moving to Seattle for a new job. While the job itself is never named, he realizes it's not for him, and he quits, and decides to take a trip up to Vancouver, Canada. He then hitchhikes with some locals to visit Celeste Mountain. Heading up the mountain, he meets Granny, gets visited by the colorful secret birds, before we get the selfie that you see in-game. Afterwards, we get to see him get to, get through, and leave the spooky hotel, as well as enter the ancient temple. A bit into the chapter, in-game, we find Theo inside a mirror, and he mentions that he was just taking a mirror selfie. On his Instagram, we get to see said selfie, which has been visually corrupted. Later, after a, we're okay, selfie, we see him chilling with Granny while they wait for Madeline. <laughs> Sick uh, gaming chair. From there, he shares an image of Madeline preparing the strawberry pie shown at the end of the game, and seemingly a Madeline's hand coming from off frame. In his next pick of a golden feather he found, he explains that he decided to head home to be there for his little sister Alex, a character who is shown and mentioned throughout the story. Later, he shares a picture explaining that he's back in Canada again to hang out with Madeline, and we can see that he got a tattoo of the earlier feather on his neck. He also shows off a strawberry caparina, that drink is the national cocktail of Brazil, which is where Theo's family is from, which is a cool little detail. We get to see Madeline practicing some archery, and then one more selfie before he heads home once more. The last post on his Instagram is a short little video where he poses for the camera while looking out over a city, explaining that he's going to take a social media break for a while. All in all, it's a really cool bit of extra world building that goes a long way to fleshing out the story and characters. Back into the game, as you may know, there is a hidden room in the Celestial Resort containing a little computer that lets you play a retro-esque Celeste. Once found, you can then revisit the bonus game at any time from the main menu. 
If you don't know, that side game is actually the original free version of Celeste created in 2016. It was developed in four days by Maddie Thorson and Noelle Berry for a game jam, and it was written for the Pico 8 Virtual Console. In time, that game was rewritten and fleshed out into a full game, which we now know as Celeste, which of course released in 2018. In 2019, on the game's third anniversary, Maddie, Noelle, and Lena Rain made Celeste 2, Lanny's Trek, this time in three days as a part of another game jam. It still looks and feels similar to the original, but this new character cannot dash, but instead gets a grappling hook that allows you to pick up and move objects like springs and snowballs, opening up a whole different playstyle. It's pretty neat. For this next detail, again, let me preface with a bit of context. So, if you don't know, Madeline's journey up the mountain is, as one might expect, a metaphor for working to overcome her personal struggles. As such, the story of Celeste touches on some seriously important topics, like depression and anxiety. As an example, near the end of Chapter 4, when the gondola ride is interrupted by Badeline, Badeline, the lever gets flung off, Madeline experiences a panic attack. With Theo's support and guidance, she visualizes a feather that must be gently kept afloat with her breathing. It's a pretty good representation of a horrible feeling that a lot of us can relate to, myself included, as well as a legitimately useful relaxation technique for managing such a situation. In Chapter 5, we see her at what is perhaps her lowest point. Around this section, uh, the song In the Mirror plays, and it has voice lines performed by Lena Rain, which can be heard when the song is reversed. I won't play all of the lines, but uh, here's just one of them for reference so you can hear what it sounds like. While it doesn't feel right to call that a fun fact or whatever, it's definitely an extra bit of detail that is appreciated because it helps flesh out the character that much more and also pull on the heartstrings. From there, let's move towards some more lighthearted stuff. Like, for example, in Chapter 9, Farewell, you might know that right at the start, you move through a nice, comfy day, you spot Granny, and suddenly she becomes a tombstone. Spooky. Uh, peeking behind the curtain, this transition was done by transporting the player from one room to another, which you can see here using the game's debug mode. Debug mode is really nice for messing with stuff, teleporting around if need be, and so on. You can change a setting to activate it or easily flip it on and off using Celeste's mod loader called Everest, which is what I did. You can actually talk to Granny, and uh, she simply says, I see you've discovered debug mode. I should also mention cheat mode, which is both fun and useful. So during the prologue, if you head left to the area with Madeline's car, you can do some inputs to activate cheat mode, allowing you to have a file with every area unlocked, but nothing collected. This also marks the file as being cheated, which means achievements can't be collected. At least, I, I think that's how it works. Either way, it's still a very good way to easily access stuff and practice as needed, or simply get footage, in my case. The inputs are as follows. It should work with every version, but I simply included the keyboard and the Xbox inputs, convert to your controller scheme as needed. From there, I'll use a bit more cheating to show off Madeline's car hidden away in Chapter 9. This can be found during normal gameplay, you just simply need to get the jellyfish from this room up into the next, and without dying, which would uh, get rid of said jelly boy, navigate up to the upper right which reveals the car. I instead used infinite dashes via assist mode slash the variant menu. In chapter 6, one of the mechanics you have to interact with are the large blocks that move once dashed into. These have very gruff and booming voice lines that were recorded by Kevin from Power Up Audio, who worked on the audio for this game. As such, these blocks are lovingly called Kevin blocks. During the Celeste tool assisted run, shown off at Summer Games Done Quick 2019, the Kevin blocks were edited to have completely different voice lines, recorded by speedrunner Covert Muffin. I love this next screen right here. Check this out. <laughs> what? So normally we call those Kevins, but I think for Covert Muffins now. Covert blocks, let's go. <laughs> Covert blocks. <laughs> This 
ended up being added to the game proper, which you can experience yourself if you name your save file Fwahaha. This next bit is actually related to that, so as you'll soon see. So, tucked away above the normal path is a hidden little building during one of the last sections of Chapter 9. This can be called the Kevin Room because of the three Kevin blocks above, and also because uh, Kevin is the person who embedded a little puzzle into this room. Said puzzle was eventually solved by players, and their findings were compiled into this Google Doc, which I will be referencing and relaying the information from, and you can find a link to it in the description. So when you enter this room, you'll hear some very eerie and seemingly out of place music, and see a multicolor screen. Scoreless Pine took the audio into their editor of choice and viewed the spectrogram view of it, which is a way of visualizing audio. At the bottom of the spooky audio is text that reads, not so empty, in cursive. This, along with the heart that can be seen inside the pixelated spectrograph, points back to the empty heart collected at the end of Remembered. When you collect said fake gray heart, everything begins to fall apart and there are audio glitches that can be heard. Angrival found that the audio shows nothing in the spectrometer the first time it's collected, but every time after, a bunch of drawings can be revealed, like Mount Celeste, Granny laughing on the car, the bird, Tassbot, and a covert block. ZapterZap found that when you catch the bird partway through the Event Horizon subchapter, the glitchy audio that plays reveals this image. When all of the glitch sounds have the in-between noise removed, text can be made out. It was found that when all of the glitch underscore add audio files were put together in the correct order, the resulting spectrograph was a collection of names of people who were part of this last community. This was confirmed to be the end of the puzzle by Kevin himself. How cool. Next, let's touch on some speed tech. So Celeste has a lot of interesting techniques that allow for crazy speed, big jumps, and useful skips. One such trick is a Demo Dash, named after its discoverer, Demo Jameson. It's performed by dashing down, then within four frames, releasing the down key. This makes Madeline dash horizontally while crouched. Since crouching shrinks the player's hitbox, you can fit through gaps that would otherwise be impossible. You can change the direction of the Demo Dash by inputting another direction after letting go of down. As of patch 1.4.0, the keybind Crouch Dash simplifies this move, allowing you to hold a direction and press that to do the trick. That's what I use to show off this next bit. During the Determination subchapter of Farewell, you'll come to this vertical room with moving stars. If you keep your dash as you head into the fall and take the smaller right path, you get to here. As it stands, this is the Demo Dash room, letting players practice two of them in a row. Successfully doing so drops you down into the next room, so it doesn't skip too much, but it is still useful for talented speedrunners. Another good way to try some fun techniques is the Winged Golden Strawberry in Chapter 1A. It might not be obvious that it's even possible, but with a bit of knowledge and uh, know-how, you can actually complete Chapter 1A without dashing a single time. I saved myself the temptation of dashing by unbinding the dash buttons, something that was made easier in the latest patch, which made it so you can rebind every button. The biggest technique that you'll need to use is spike jumping, which is where you perform a wall kick or neutral jump on a bit of wall covered in spikes. As long as Madeline is moving in the same direction as the spikes, she can kick off of the wall behind them for safety. It feels wrong and precise and shouldn't work, but it surprisingly does work and it's quite doable once you get the feel for it. Also, uh, to be clear, neutral jumping is where you jump away from a wall without holding a direction or the grab button. This makes the jump very small, which lets you fall back towards the wall. With the right timing, you can repeatedly do this to jump up the wall infinitely, and this doesn't use any stamina. This is very important in the final room before the Golden Winged Berry. All in all, it's a very cool challenge, and while I'm sure plenty of people have created guides for a dashless chapter 1A, I followed along with I Am Dad Bod's tutorial, great name, which I found quite helpful. It'll be linked in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Chapter 1A is also great for getting the 1-Up achievement. If you don't know, that is where you collect 6 or more berries in a row. I tried, but I was not able to do this myself. But my bud Ingenious Clown was able to, as you can see here. This was right after he got the winged golden strawberry during our Discord call with minimal guidance. 
Despite not knowing that it was a thing like 15 minutes prior, I spent at least an hour. I'm not salty. Okay, maybe a little bit. Another little Mario reference can be found with the Crystal Hearts in Chapter 4. When you get to this hidden room, you'll find the Crystal Hearts being way too high to get normally. The intended solution is to actually stand on this unique, out of place white block and crouch. After a few seconds, you'll fall down and be behind it, and thus in the background. You can then climb the background terrain up to the heart. I believe this is the only place this is doable in the entire game of Celeste. This is a reference to Mario 3, where you can fall down behind white blocks by crashing for a few seconds, and in World 1-3, doing this then quickly running to the end takes you to a toad house with the game's first warp whistle. It's a pretty neat reference. Another hidden achievement, which is uh, way harder, is wow which requires you to collect the moonberry which is uh way easier said than done right at the end of farewell after breaking the vault you can choose to head left then up this takes you on a long secret path that most will find very challenging and i am nowhere near ready to take this on legitimately so this is a cheat powered preview at the end when you collect the berry it says wow hence the achievement name, and then from there you can take the purple orb that leads to the chapter's end. Speaking of endings, we're approaching the end of this video, so let's finish off with a couple neat details regarding endings. So at the end of the normal game, during the epilogue, you can opt to go to the right, across the bridge that was broken at the start of the game, and visit the bird's nest. I think that's pretty cool, and from what I've seen on the internet, not a lot of people knew that, at least at first. Last but not least, once you finish Chapter 9 Farewell, at the very end, you're treated to a cutscene where Madeline is back at home and calls up Theo to catch up and let him know that she's okay. During this, we get a glimpse into her room, and among other things, there are a couple of details that suggest Madeline might be trans, namely the flag and the pills. I bring this up because when the Farewell chapter was added to the game in September of 2019, there was a lot of discussion about this possible aspect of Madeline's character, especially because there was nothing stated in writing, in or out of the game by the developers. On November 5th, 2020, writer and designer of Celeste, Maddie Thorson, published a Medium article stating that, indeed, Madeline is canonically trans. Of course, this article includes way more than that, so I think it's worth reading for those who are interested and might not have seen it before. You can find a link to the article in the description. All that said, I think it's important to ask that you please be respectful in the comments when discussing this or anything else brought up in the video. That's about it for said video, so I'd like to thank my channel members for their support with a mountain-sized thanks to Pseudonymous, Achilles Rhodes, and Captain Crayfish for being super fans. If you enjoyed this video, why not leave a like, perhaps subscribe, and uh, if you feel like it, check out some of my other stuff. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video, Bye bye